I can't believe it's been this long already, but two whole years ago back in 2021, Brave Search entered its public beta in the Brave browser, now offering users the first independent privacy search and browser alternative to big tech. Following that, in the same year during October, Brave Search became the default search engine in the Brave browser. Now say what you will about Brave and its crypto features, many of the complaints I will probably agree with, but I absolutely cannot fault Brave for trying to compete with Google in the search engine space, trying to actually make something that is an independent search engine. There's nothing inherently wrong with solutions like DuckDuckGo, and nowadays they do perform some of their own indexing, but they are still very heavily reliant upon Microsoft and Bing. And over the years, this has gotten them into a bit of hot water. For example, when they weren't blocking Microsoft trackers. Over the next week, we'll expand the third-party tracking script through Block from loading on websites to include scripts from Microsoft in our browsing apps iOS and Android and our browser extensions Chrome, Firefox, Safari, Edge, and Opera with beta apps to follow in the coming months. Previously, we were limited in how we apply our third-party tracker loading protection on Microsoft tracking scripts due to a policy requirement related to our use of Bing as a source of our private search results. We're glad this is no longer the case. We have not had and do not have any similar limitation with any other company. Microsoft scripts were never embedded in our search engine or apps, which do not track you. Websites insert these scripts for their own purposes, and so they never sent any information to DuckDuckGo. Since we were already restricting Microsoft tracking through our other web tracking protections, like blocking Microsoft's third-party cookies in our browser, this update means we're now doing much more to block trackers than most other browsers. Along with this, there is the advertising. Advertising on DuckDuckGo is done in partnership with Microsoft. Viewing ads on DuckDuckGo is anonymous, and Microsoft has committed to not profile our users on ad clicks. When you click on a Microsoft-provided ad that appears on DuckDuckGo, Microsoft advertising does not associate your ad click behavior with a user profile. It also does not store or share that information other than for accounting purposes. But no matter what you say to someone who really cares about privacy, the second that Microsoft is involved, you know, there's going to be some questions about what's really happening. Whereas the Brave search engine, this is a fully independent search engine with its own independent index. But that's not without its flaws. Like it or not, for most topics out there, Google just provides better and more consistent results. There are certainly exceptions with certain politically charged topics and certain topics that different governments don't want to be talked about, but as a general rule, Google results tend to be better. And there's a very simple reason for this. Firstly, they have a lot more processing power. And secondly, they have a lot more data to work with because they collect a lot more data on their users, which gives them a lot better of an idea of what users are looking for, with the downside that they collect all of your data. Even though Brave Search will probably never provide results as good as Google, that doesn't mean they shouldn't do it. Nowadays, it is so much better than it was during that public beta. Back then, it was basically unusable. Just basic topics. It would send you to nonsense that has absolutely nothing to do with what you're looking for. Nowadays, most of the time, it's fine. It's not great, but it's functional. One of the neat things that Brave added during the beta and still has today, still in beta because it's not exactly being worked on, is a feature called Goggles. These allow you to have a really powerful filter to limit the websites that you want to see. One of the basic examples is news from the left or news from the right. So you can see only results from that specific political leaning. Or maybe you just want to see results from tech websites or results from gaming websites. And you can configure exactly the sites that you want to see. So if there's a certain site out there like, I don't know, Kotaku, for example, that you think is absolute garbage, you can completely filter it from the results. Sadly, due to the feature still being in beta, it's not exactly easy to use. There's not a nice interface we can say, I want this website, and I want this website, and this website. What you actually have to do is modify a config file, which for a search engine isn't something that most people are expecting to do. Like, it's fine for me. I'm a Linux user. I modify config files. But for some regular person who just wants to step away from Google and try out this brief search thing, it's a little bit daunting. It links you to a quick start guide that explains how it all works, but it's still a bit much. 
and like every search engine had to do back at the start of the year, Brave messed around with AI search in what they dubbed the Summarizer, an AI tool that synthesized relevant results, akin to things like Google's Bard and Microsoft and OpenAI's ChatGPT-powered Bing. But this solution isn't using any of the off-the-shelf products. From everything we know about it, it's something developed in-house. For simple answers to simple questions, it generally works well enough. Unlike the Bing solution, you don't get to interact with it directly. You'll type a question into your search engine, and if it deems it can answer the question, then it will give you a result. So for a lot of questions you ask, there'll just be no answer whatsoever, especially something that's sort of still ongoing like the writer's strike, it just won't give you an answer. And for some questions, it just doesn't really know what to say. It'll give you an answer, but it seems like it's a kind of nonsense answer and it's repeating the same things a couple of times. It's very much a work in progress. And much like with general search engine indexing, large language models require a lot of data and the more data you have and the more processing you have, the better they get. So anything done by Microsoft or Google just naturally is going to be better, assuming they don't, you know, neuter the results. These new large language models have a lot of legal issues surrounding them, and I don't know how it's all going to play out in the long run. It may turn out that, you know, a lot of countries end up banning them, maybe countries require you to pay all the rights holders for the content you're using, maybe a lot of countries just don't do anything, while other countries have really strict restrictions, and then all of the large language model companies just move to those regions and do not care whatsoever about the law of those regions. Maybe I'll be wrong in the long run, but I would expect the last thing to happen. There are always going to be regions that simply do not care about the rights holders and will just focus on whatever makes them the most money. But while all of that stuff is neat, there is one basic feature that Brave was still missing. Image search. Not to say that you couldn't click the image search button and it would show you images, but those results were not coming from the Brave Index. Instead, it was redirecting you either to Google or Bing, which, you know, gives the user the ability to use a search engine like they would normally use it, but it's not optimal. You want to keep people within the Brave ecosystem using the Brave Index. With that being said, as of a few days ago, it has finally changed. Today, Brave Search is releasing its own image and video search. Now, any Brave Search query can be served directly from Brave's own index, enabling users to benefit from a fully independent search engine that protects their privacy and is censorship resistant. Also linking to this blog post, Brave Search launches independent image and video search. This comes on the heels of removing calls to Bing Search API for images and videos this past May. Previously, it wasn't a redirect, it was just showing Bing results in the search. To bridge the gap between removal of Bing, which accounted for only 7% of results, and providing our own solution today, we temporarily gave our users the option of an alternative image slash video search via redirect to Bing or Google, allowing us to maintain convenient and familiar search habits from within Brave Search. We realized that the redirect option was not popular with some of our users and thank them for their patience during this transition. If you're using Brave and you're like actively using Brave Search, you probably don't want to go over to Google just for this one kind of search. You probably want to be able to do everything within the actual Brave Search. This was a temporary decision to help users find results with minimum hassle, while we work to offer a sustainable, privacy-preserving, and independent image and video search option. Web content searches make up the majority of all search engine results, that being searching for websites, while image and video search has become fragmented due to the exponential growth of visual content on the internet. Increasingly, users are using their favorite social and content platforms to discover visual content, but this comes at a significant cost to user privacy. So searching for the content on YouTube or on Twitter or on, I don't know, whatever other websites you want to be using, TikTok, I don't know. Brave Search is private and anonymous, which sets a high bar for image and video search to meet that most companies are not even going to remotely try. They're just not even going to show up to the start of the race. They're just going to be like, ah, you can have that. We'll just provide better results and take all of the data. Whether it's a matter of personal safety or personal preference, users should be able to discover content without their search and reporting and profiling those results to a big tech company. All of that sounds great. 
but how well does it work? Well, this right here is a Google search for FFXVI, Final Fantasy 16. The results we get on the content search, you know, these are the results you'd expect. The Final Fantasy 16 website, the Wikipedia, and then some random news sites where you can buy the game and things like that. If we go to images, we get image results of the game, of characters in the game, perfectly fine, makes sense. Over on the Brave side, we have the Final Fantasy 16 website, the Reddit, the Wikipedia, and, you know, this looks reasonable. It's giving us results that make sense. Let's look at the image results. Showing results for FFXIV. So, it thinks I meant to search for Final Fantasy XIV, not 16, and it's showing me results for Final Fantasy XIV. Let's actually search for the thing I mean to search for. Okay, we do get some stuff of the game. We have this really random low-res picture from Metacritic. We have some picture of Yoshi P, and I assume a voice actor from the game. Like, we're getting results that are somewhat related, but this is obviously, like, a lot more what the user is expecting. And the exact same if you search for something like anime. This is the Google search, you know, the results are good here. The Brave search, well, you have a couple of pictures that this is Persona 5, I guess that technically counts. Here's a manga picture, and then random pictures of like actual people, some AI art generation, and that's, you know, their results. You're getting something, and if you scroll down, you do start seeing better results. But this is where most people are going to stop with a search engine. Maybe you think it is just that query. Let's go basically as mainstream as you're going to get and search for Pepsi. That first picture is half not Pepsi. We have a Coke here. This shouldn't even be anywhere near the top. That should be like, wait, that's another Coke. And that's another Coke. They shouldn't even... That's more Coke. They shouldn't even be anywhere near the top of the result. Trying the same thing on Google, and you're going to get... Pepsi. Now, there is these two pictures here of comparison between Pepsi and Coke. But the vast majority of the top results are Pepsi. Also, first result, Pepsi logo. Over here, I don't know if the logo's anywhere to be seen. It's probably going to be here somewhere. Maybe. Nope, actually, not at all. Keep in mind, two years ago, this is what the results looked like with the web search. It was this bad. You had results that didn't really make any sense. Sometimes they'd give you results, but it would be this website that doesn't make any sense to be ranked highly. Like, why is this here instead of this other, you know, popular website that people actually go to? So I have absolutely no doubts that things are going to get better. And if right now the results you get just are not workable. In this case, they're mostly usable. But you can go to find elsewhere and then redirect you over to Bing or Google. And doing that, in this case, is going to give you those results we just saw before. Also, Brave Search currently has basically zero filtering. You have a country you want to say you are from. You have Safe Search. And that is all. You don't have all of these things like the size, the color, the type, the time it was posted, the usage rights. And all of this stuff is going to be coming sometime in the future. And Brave is fully aware that it is currently missing. Technical note. For all search results, text, image, and video, our goal is to offer a great alternative to big tech, one that can compete on both quality and independence and serve the right results all the time. However, if we can't deliver the right result, we also strive to make it easy and intuitive to continue a search elsewhere. Functionally, this means that certain capabilities such as advanced filters like license type or aspect ratio may not be immediately available, but will be soon. For now, we believe offering a clear alternative is more important than complete feature parity. They could just say, well, we're not going to offer that redirect. You're going to use Brave or you're not going to use Brave. And what's going to happen is people are just not going to use Brave. So I feel like this direction is a much better direction, at least for the short term. So anyway, 
what search engine do you use? Do you make use of Brave? Do you use Bing? Do you use Google? Do you use one of those open source search engines that are like a meta search engine that brings a bunch of different results together? I would love to know. So let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. And if you like the video, go like the video. And if you really like the video and you want to become one over these amazing people over here, check out the Patreon, subscribe, silly bear, pay link in the description down below. That's going to be it for me. And are you brave enough to use brave?